be talking on dialysis disequilibrium syndrome. Dialysis disequilibrium syndrome. So, which patient is at risk of dialysis syndrome? Patient who are at extremes of age. Extremes of age means maybe elderly or child, or who is going first time hemodialysis and who has high concentration of BUM in her in his her blood. These groups of patients is at high risk of going towards DDS. Okay, and what is the basic uh, pathophysiological mechanism underlying this disequilibrium? Exactly it is not known. What is known is osmotic shift. So let me draw a broad vessel for you. And let's suppose this broad vessel is going towards cerebral hemisphere. This is these are the cerebral hemispheres, cerebral parenchyma. Okay. So what happens that initially there is high concentration of urea in the blood vessels. And uh, when with dialysis, when you remove this urea, what happens? The osmolality of the blood falls down. And uh, then the water starts shifting inside the cerebral parenchyma. And the parenchyma starts to swell. So when the brain starts to swell with water, you can guess what are the symptoms patient may have. Patient may have nausea, vomiting, headache, alteration in the baseline state of uh, consciousness. Patient may be agitated, mania, or maybe decreased responsiveness, can go in stupor, coma, or even mortality can occur. So this, this much fatal can be dialysis disequilibrium syndrome. That's why we need to know about DDS, okay? Uh, so a 60 year old female came to our emergency department and she was a known case of chronic kidney disease for about two years and she had never undergoed any type of dialysis in the past uh, and on examination you can see the level of consciousness of this patient she is not responding to any verbal stimuli and uh, uh, she looks it as if she is in obtunded state and going towards a stuprous state. On blood analysis, her urea was 350, creatinine was 13, bicarbonate was 12. So with this we made working diagnosis of uremic encephalopathy with metabolic acidosis, secondary to chronic kidney disease, encephalopathy. So, as she had never underwent dialysis in the past, and she had elevated BUM, so we took preventive measures to prevent dialysis uh, disequilibrium syndrome. Okay. So what are the preventive measures we took? We, we kept the duration at 2 hours and we set the blood flow at 160 ml per minute. So we, we set low blood flow rate and we keep the time duration low uh, so that there is not much osmotic shift uh, in her blood. So despite these preventive measures, uh, after one and a half hour, her uh, consciousness uh, deteriorated. And uh, you can see in this video, she is almost uh, a, a stuprous to comatose state. After one and a half hour of uh, dialysis, she, her, her consciousness deteriorated and now looks, uh, she looks as if she is in comatose state. At that time, BP was 170 by 90, pulse was 90 per minute. Despite preventive measures, she underwent yeah, she went into dialysis disequilibrium syndrome. So initially what we did was we did not stop the dialysis. We did sodium modeling in machine. Sodium profiling what we call. So our machine has uh, this setting and uh, initially her sodium was 132 and it was set at uh, 137 and we increased the sodi uh, one, one so sodium level to 142 okay so this is uh, called sodium profiling so what is the concept behind this is that uh, let me draw the blood vessel again for you 
this is the cerebral parenchyma so when you remove the urea those molality falls down and the water starts diffusing towards the brain parenchyma so instead of urea we increase the concentration of sodium so what happens that uh, the uh, osmolality again increases and the process of diffusion inside the brain slows down that's why the uh, cerebral swelling slows down okay so uh, that is the one of the uh, treatment uh, that we can uh, adopt for uh, dialysis dyscalculia syndrome but let's suppose if you, our machine does not have this setting so what we can do we can change the dialysis bath we can use the dialysis bath with high sodium concentration okay so that uh, the high sodium concentration in the blood is uh, temporarily maintained in the higher range to prevent uh, to treat the uh, osmotic uh, shift okay Uh, and uh, after uh, doing this sodium modeling we waited for about 30 minutes but uh, even after one uh, half an hour even after 30 minute her uh, consciousness did not uh, improve so what we did was we stopped the dialysis and uh, we gave her 12.5 g mannitol uh, we can give mannitol or Uh, 23% uh, saline about 5 ml but uh, at that moment we did not have saline so we give uh, mannitol uh, that is uh, uh, the mechanism is also same you temporarily increase the uh, osmolarity of the blood to prevent osmotic shift uh, and about uh, one hour her consciousness uh, returned back to her previous state thank you